future CPAs, welcome back to my channel, Accounting Lessons with BCB. Sir Brian here. Today, we will be discussing about post-employment benefits. Before watching this video, I advise you to watch first the previous lecture video on short-term employee benefits. The link is provided in the description. Okay, let's start. So, what do we mean by post-employment benefits? When we say post-employment benefits, these are employee benefits other than termination benefits, which are payable after the completion of employment. So, if an employee resigns, dito palang papasok yung tinatawag natin post-employment benefits. Kaya siya tinawag na post-employment benefits because when we say post, that is already after, no? After employment benefits, kumbaga. Okay? Next. Under IS-19, post-employment benefit plans are classified as either defined contribution plans or defined benefit plans. Let's differentiate these two. Okay. So, pag sinabi nating defined contribution plan, it is a type of post-employment benefit under which an entity pays fixed contributions into a separate entity known as the fund. Okay? So pag sinabi nating defined contribution plan, si company ay naguhulog siya ng tinatawag nating contributions, no? These contributions are fixed, no? Tapos saan niya hinuhulog yan, sir? Sa isang fund. No? Magse-set up si company ng isang fund, pwedeng separate entity 'yon. Okay? The contribution may be a fixed amount, a percentage of employer's income, a percentage of employee's earnings or combination of this, no? Depende 'yan sa policy ng company as to the defined contribution plan. Okay? Next characteristic of defined contribution plan is that the entity has no obligation to pay further contributions if the fund becomes insufficient. Now, etong fund kasi na ito ay ini-invest. Tama? Pinapasok ito sa mga uh, income generating activities. Okay? So in in worst case scenario, kapag yung fund nag-incur nag ng loss, wala nang obligation si company dito na maghulog, no? Kasi in the first place, nakakapaghulog naman siya ng fixed contributions. Yun lang naman yung obligation niya under defined contribution plan. Okay? Because of this characteristic, the employee will bear what we call investment risk. When we say investment risk, ito yung risk na mabawasan yung benefit niya. No? So yung risk na yan, si employee ang kumakarga. Diba? So that ano, uh, pinapanalangin natin or pinapanalangin ni employee na sana gumanda yung performance ng fund para okay, okay yung benefits niya. No? Nakukuha. So, ano ba ang example ng defined contribution plan? Mga SSS contributions in, in, the, in the case of private companies or GSIS contributions in the case of government entities naman. Okay? So yung mga contributions na yan, yan ay mga defined contribution plan. Okay? Next, what about defined benefit plan? Pag sinabi nating defined benefit plan, the obligation is to provide the agreed benefits to employees. No? Tignan niyo yung pangalan. Defined benefit. So, ibig sabihin, sa simula pa lang, alam na natin kung magkano yung magiging benefit ng empleyado pag nag-resign na siya. ba? Sa defined contribution plan, ang alam natin dyan ay yung magiging contribution natin. But the benefit, hindi pa natin alam talaga. Kasi sa defined contribution plan, dependent yung magiging benefit sa performance ng fund. Kung maganda performance, edi maraming benefits. Pag pangit ang performance, reduce yung benefits. Okay? So defined benefit plan naman, regardless of the performance of the fund, yung benefits sa employees, okay na. 
na finalized na yan. Alright? That's why, under the defined benefit plan, the contribution is not fixed. And the company has an obligation to pay further contributions if the fund becomes insufficient. So pagpangit yung pamamalakad sa fund natin dito, there is there is an obligation na dapat mag-contribute ng additional amounts. Okay? That's why this time the company or the employer will bear the investment risk naman. Okay? Ano example ng defined benefit plan? That would be the benefits under the Republic Act 7641 or the Retirement Pay Law of the Philippines. Okay? Yan. Yan ang pinagkaiba ni defined contribution plan and defined benefit plan. Okay? In this lecture video, defined contribution plan lang muna ang i-discuss ko. Then in the next lecture video, magde-define benefit plan tayo. Okay? Sige. So, how do we account for defined benefit, I mean, defined contribution plans? Madali lang ang accounting niya actually, no? Madali lang accounting ng defined contribution plan because the obligation is determined by the amounts to be contributed. Yun lang. Alamin mo lang kung magkano ang kailangan mo i-contribute. Yun na yun. Tapos agad. ba? Diba? Next, for defined contribution plans, there will be no actuarial assumptions. No? Ano itong mga actuarial assumptions na to sir? Define natin dito. Actuarial assumptions are the entity's best estimates of the variables that will determine the ultimate cost of providing post-employment benefits. Ang example kasi ng mga actuarial, actuarial assumptions ay mga assumptions natin on the demographic profile, on the mortality rate of the employees, di ba? Ano pa? Financial variables pa. Their salary levels. Ayan. Dito sa DCP or sa design, design tuloy, sa defined contribution plan, hindi tayo gumagamit ng actuarial assumptions. Okay? Mas i-discuss natin itong actuarial assumptions pag nasa defined benefit plan na tayo. Sa ngayon, hindi muna. Okay? Sige. Since there is no actuarial assumptions under DCP, there would be no possibility of what we call actuarial gains and losses. Okay? Kaya ano lang, simple lang yung accounting natin kay DCP. No? So under DCP, the obligation are measured on an undiscounted basis. Again, pag sinabi natin undiscounted basis, these are absolute amounts. Unless they are not expected to be settled within 12 months after the end of reporting period. Pag humaba yung, yung time horizon natin, we need to measure that on, an, on a discounted basis. No? Nakukuha. Ayan. Pero normally kasi, ang mga ang mga problems natin kay DCP, mga ano lang, straightforward lang, no? mga simple lang. Okay? Next, what will be the accounting procedures for DCPs? Okay, number one, the contribution shall be recognized as expense. Yan. Kung magkano yung required contribution mo for each period, then record mo lang yan as an expense. Okay? Then, any unpaid contribution shall be accrued. So, kapag hindi ka nakapag-contribute or may kulang sa contribution mo, magre-recognize ka ng liability. Di ba? Kapag may deficiency ka. Okay? Next, kung may excess ka naman na na-contribute or sobra-sobra yung na-contribute mo, yung excess na yan, i-recognize mo siya as an asset in a form of prepaid expense. But the limit there is only to the extent that the prepayment will lead to a reduction in future payments or refunds. Okay? So, summarize lang natin. Number one, yung contribution mo, expense yan. Kung may kulang ka sa kinontribute mo or hindi ka nag-contribute at all during a particular period, you must recognize a liability. And kapag sobra naman yung mga binabayad mo, magre-recognize ka ng prepaid expense 
only to the extent that the prepayment will lead to a reduction in future payments. Yes? Okay. Let's answer a problem that will reinforce the concepts of defined contribution plans. Okay? Now, Kenya company provides retirement benefits to its employees through a defined contribution plan. The plan provides that the company shall co contribute annually 8% of gross payroll to a funding agency. In addition, the company is also required to contribute 5% of annual sales exceeding 10 million. So during 2023, gross payroll is 6 million while the total sales 35 million. Okay, let's start with number one. How much is the retirement benefits expense to be reported in 2023? Okay, so how do we compute for this one? That is simply follow the plan. No, follow the plan. Ang sabi dito is 8% of gross payroll and 5% of annual sales exceeding 10 million. So to compute for the retirement benefits expense, that will become magkano yung gross payroll for 2023. That is 6 million. Kuha ka ng 8% dyan. Okay? Plus, ano yung sabi natin? In addition, company will be, will contribute 5% of annual sales exceeding 10 million. Okay. So, magkano yung sales natin for 2023? 35 million. Eh, ang sabi, annual sales exceeding 10 million. So, tanggalin natin yung 10 million. So, the excess sale is 25 million. Tama? Diyan mo kukunin yung 5% naman. Okay? So, sige. Tuloy natin yung computation. 6 million times 0 0.08. That is 480,000. Plus 25 million times 5%. 1 to 50,000. So magkano ang ating retirement benefits expense 2023? That will be 480,000 plus 1 to 50. Sagot natin 1,730,000. Okay? So answer for number 1, 1,730,000. Tandaan niya na. Sige. Number two. Assuming the company contributed 1.8 million to the funding agency, prepare the journal entry. Ayun. So, kumbaga, para tayong babalik dun sa basic concept ng short-term employee benefits, no? Yung, i-compare mo yung amount of benefit and yung amount paid. ba? Sige. Magkano nga ulit yung retirement benefit natin? The, the retirement benefits? 1,730,000. Magkano yung amount paid for number 2? 1.8 million. Ang benefit is 1.73 million lang. Pero ang binayad, 1.8 million. Okay? So anong tawag natin dito sa difference nilang 70,000? Is this an excess or a deficiency? This is? An excess. Tama? So, the difference will be called prepaid retirement benefits. Entry, debit, retirement, benefit expense equal to the computed benefit kanina, 1.730,000. Diba? Debit also prepaid retirement benefits amounting to 70,000 and credit cash magkano to 1.8 million no yeah so the journal entry for number 2 is debit retirement benefits expense 1.73 million and debit prepaid retirement benefits Credit cash. Gets nyo? Next. Last one. 
Assuming the company contributed 1.5 million, prepare the journal entry. Sige, again. Magkano yung retirement benefits natin na na-compute sa number one? 1.73 million. How much is the amount paid? 1.5 million. The difference is 230,000. Since the retirement benefits is higher than the amount paid, anong tawag natin kay 230? Excess or deficiency? This is a deficiency. That's why meron kang accrued retirement benefits this time. May utang ka, kumbaga. No? So ano ang entry natin? Debit, retirement, benefits, expense, equal to the amount of benefit, 1.73 million credit cash 1.5 million credit accrued retirement benefits magkano yun? 230,000 so that will be your journal entry for number Three. All right. Yeah. So in our next lecture video, we will now be discussing the second type of post-employment benefit plan. That's your defined benefit plan. Okay. So yeah, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for free accounting lecture videos. Thank you for watching, guys.